Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Saturday, November 11th at midnight, 2017. New York City and Toronto experienced the coldest November 10th ever. Grand solar minimum much? On November 10th, 2017, the city of Toronto, Canada registered minus 10.1 C, breaking its previous record for the day set in 1938. On the same day, the temperature in Central Park, New York City dropped to 3.3 C, beating the record low of minus 2.7 in 1914. Those are 100-year records, folks. America braces for more freezing weather after record-breaking cold snap sent temperatures plunging over Veterans Day weekend caused by unusual system squatting over Greenland. Hmm, this was caused by Greenland. Record low temperatures were recorded in New York while Chicago was blanketed by snow on Saturday. Now meteorologists say more freezing weather could be on the way as the date approaches Thanksgiving. An unusual holding pattern of high pressure over Greenland has pushed the jet stream south, bringing Arctic air to much of the northern United States. Meanwhile, the Northeast felt the sting of freezing temperatures, a rarity for this early November. Yes, it was rare. Record cold in New York. <clears throat> The coldest air of the season so far moved in Friday. Yes, it did. It dropped to 24, breaking the record of 28, set in 33. That's a four-degree difference. That got crushed. Unusual record lows in Boston. Hmm. I bet you Greenland has something to do with it. Friday, November 3rd, the temperature in Boston reached 75. This morning, we hit another record low. The temperature bombed out at 23. Boom. Records are the 20s. Heads up for Ireland. Colder than average winter is predicted. And I like this article. And the reason I, uh, I'm going to share it with you guys is because he talks about the sun. It's been bandied about all the headlines, coldest winter in a decade, but most re reputable forecasters tend to stay away from making any long-range predictions, as generally the weather is just too unpredictable. However, the team at Irish Weather Online have said they do believe that this winter looks set to be cooler on average than recent years. This winter will be somewhat cooler than most recent winters, with frequent bouts of wintry showers on higher ground in the northwesterly winds, a pattern that may bring more snow to Contrat and Ulster than most of the Lanster and Munster. <laughs> I see some potential for a colder spell affecting eastern counties toward late January. Here it says, speaking to local weather forecaster Cathal Nolan of the Midlands Weather Channel, he says he is staying away from making any long-range predictions until next year to see whether his own theory of how solar fares affect our weather pans out. Well, I hope that theory pans out. Let's talk about cosmic rays. Transport nightmare on Nairobi, Mombasa Highway after flooding in Sultan Muhammad. Canyon, November 11th, traffic on the Nairobi-Mombasa Highway was paralyzed because of flooding on the Sultan Umad, where a river burst its banks due to heavy rains, rendering the road impassable. Guys, this isn't going to stop. This is cosmic ray flux. Now, I'm going to leave you some articles, and we'll talk about it at the end of the video if you want to stay, about solar activity having a direct impact on Earth's cloud cover. So if you're interested in that, stay to the end, and we'll talk about that. But let's get on with the Grand Solar Minimum Update. There was an earthquake detected in Bali near Mount Ogun. Now here's Bali, the island of. And we predicted a month ago that this was going to erupt during this Grand Solar Minimum. So anytime moving forward, this will erupt. And it is a very violent stratovolcano. They recently evacuated the island and there was an up when there was an uptick in seismicity, but nothing like this. This is a 5.0 ticking off right near the caldera rim, and this is some hot stuff, folks. Look at the size of that caldera. So when this baby blows, whew, this thing looks like a little pinion, but that is a quake right in the uh, magma chamber of Agung, and that's a heads up. We're getting very close to eruptive behavior. Above 5.4, and this baby's bound to blow. So it's right on the cusp, guys. 
Volcanic cone grows in Vanuatu. We've talked about that volcano. Photographic evidence from Vanuatu's Ambe volcano confirms the volcanic cone island in the crater lake here has risen from the bed of the Monarovoa crater lake. So this inner crater is rising, and that's a heads up there for Vanuatu. Talking about cosmic ray flux, cosmic rays also affect the subsurface. So not only do they penetrate the atmosphere and cause increased cloud nucleation, which causes extra precipitation, global cooling, increased albedo, they then pass through the atmosphere at the level where cloud nucleation is happening and continue to go through people, through the surface, and into the earth. And if they encounter... Uh, plasticity in the subsurface in the form of magma, they can heat that as well. So uptick in seismic activity, uptick in volcanism, uptick in flooding and rain. These are all symptoms of high cosmic ray flux. And uh, interestingly enough, the article I just had up, NASA and Japan, they're teaming up to detect, to detect rare cosmic rays. So I'll leave you this article. It's an international team, and that's a heads up. We're going to be looking at these cosmic rays from space. These are very high energy rays, not the sun's cosmic rays, but the cosmic rays that come from outside of our solar system. So I'll leave you that link. Also, we have a group of world-renowned scientists and seismologists converging on Marlboro in New Zealand that the creased hills and the recent fault line ruptures will be their focus of the Convention of International Earthquake Scientists over the coming week. So guys, if you want to talk to these people, get down to this conference if you're in New Zealand. More than 100 overseas scientists have joined 20 more New Zealand geologists in Blenheim to begin a workshop on active fault lines and ancient quakes in New Zealand. This is important because they're going to be using historical data and we're in the very similar point in time where they're there probably to make the correlations. Now, New Zealand has suffered major volcanic eruptions during grand solar minimums, and it is very, very symptomatic of high cosmic ray flux. There are major eruptions happening during the Maunder minimum, during the Dalton minimum, when the cosmic rays are very high. Watts per square meter is about 36.5 which is the same place we're at, folks. So historically, they've erupted back here, and we are falling into that same zone currently. So heads up. So if you're from New Zealand and you're interested in the volcano hazard or volcanoes, yes, I'm talking to you guys listening. I'll leave this link for you. More cosmic ray flux and crop damage. Heavy rains damage almost a third of Lithuania's total grain crop area. A third of the total grain crop area. Heavy rains that battered Lithuania this past summer and autumn damaged nearly one third of the country's total crop grain area. But not all of the affected farmers will receive financial aid from the European Union. The main purposes of the data is to enable European commissioners to look at the scale and total we're talking about. 409,000 hectares, or 27% of the total area of grain crops. But that doesn't mean that everything was lost there. Yeah, we'll be able to feed the scraps to our chickens. Heads up, Cosmic Rays. Let's talk about them. Solar activity does have a direct impact on Earth's cloud cover, and this is an August 2016 article. A team of scientists from the National Space Institute and the Technical University of Denmark and the Rock Institute of Physics at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem have linked large solar eruptions to changes in Earth's cloud cover in a study based on a 25 years of satellite observations. Skeptical Science has a, a nice article out, Cosmic Rays and Global Warming, and they have this w amazing chart here, which we're going to talk about. I'll leave you this paper. And let's get to the graph. Now, what this graph is showing you is that in 2009 here, we had the highest galactic cosmic rays on record. And you can also see a nice correlation between cosmic ray flux and temperature. It's almost following it to the key. Boom. Boom. 
following the blow. Boom. Boom. And now if this graph continued, you would see it's falling off because we're falling off. So we can come over to the CHIMP5, uh, the CMIP5. Oh, this is the CMIP6, the most recent projection, and it, it is updated. Tonight I updated it with all the data that exists in the world to today. And you can see that the lowest galactic cosmic rays ever recorded in modern history is currently being broken as we speak. And for the next five years, guys, we're headed into uncharted territory. I'll leave you papers here. Influence of cosmic ray variability on the monsoon rainfall and temperature. This is a nice abstract. It shows decreasing cosmic ray flux decreases rainfall, increasing cosmic ray flux may enhance rainfall. Hmm. And we are in the highest cosmic ray flux ever in recorded history. NASA and Japan team up and detect rare cosmic rays. This is the article. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. If you don't know yet that solar activity has a direct impact on Earth's climate, you haven't been watching our channel. Be safe, everyone.